Business or pleasure? <laughs> Both. All right, then. What is it? <laughs> Welcome. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Max. Uh, Max, nice to meet you. Yeah, I, I read your biography and I aligned with it a, a lot. So I'm a modern hippie, I guess. Um, I never liked that word, but all right. Oh, whatever. Beatnik. What do you like the word beatnik? I, I sort of like to be an individual. All <laughs> those labels were, they made you less powerful than an individual. So I'm into first contact and the aliens. Um, were you aware of the aliens in your lifetime? Uh, barely, but yes. They didn't really have much to do with me. I wasn't in a p position of control in the government, so they sort of overlooked me to a certain extent. I see. I was thinking that in your spiritual uh, yeah. travel in India, you might have experienced some of that. Spiritual. Yes, a little bit, but they didn't, weren't there to uh, talk politics. They were there to smoke. Right. Uh huh. So they were there to experience that which we were experiencing and not to really com on, comment on the uh, state of the world. But Are you they, right. they did enjoy our company. Nice. Uh, uh huh. Well, but they didn't make themselves well known. I I saw a couple of them in their original state, but uh -huh. that was a mistake. Once a, an alien gets too stoned, he can show who he is just like anybody else. Uh huh. And what did you think about them? Were you interested in the uh, alien existence? I was like, whoa, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> and uh, I, because it was not there for very long, but it was there long enough for me to say, was that like a flashback from a trip or was that um, really what I saw? I so, see. and three other people saw it. So I said, holy shit. Whoa. That was amazing. So, <laughs> yeah. So that was my, the first time was the most, was the most surprising time. So, and they were, they weren't there to talk to me. I think they were there to experience what I was trying to experience. Right, uh-huh. So but they were, um, I, I don't know if, if it affected them the same way it affected me, but they certainly seem to have a buzz going on, so. I, I, I figured out that in your environment, there were people who into aliens full way, and um, you were very informed, so I was thinking you would be informed about the aliens. Uh, people told me a lot of stuff. Not always did I believe everything that I heard. And that's what made me, uh, that's what pushed me forward is because I reacted very strongly to the things that I believed in. And if I didn't believe in it, I didn't act strongly about it. But if I did believe that it was the truth, I acted really strong, reacted really strongly. And I had people that would be, uh, uh, would push me to also react very strongly. So uh -huh. it was a great time for me to uh, move forward because it was a right time for them to see that there was changes coming and the music scene was also red really speaking of that at the time as well. So I was speaking along with actually the media at the time, but in a different reference and frame of mind. Yeah. Uh-huh. But I was right on target with the main pulse of the of the of the nation. 
Yes, so, absolutely. So I was, I was going, yes, let's ride this freaking wave as far as we can ride it because I wanted to see some freaking change. I, I'm being nice. I usually say fucking change, but I'll be nice. So um, I wanted to see this change. I wanted to see people express themselves for who they really were instead of this uh, round peg in a square hole or whatever you want to freaking call it. They were, they were just being squished into areas of the world. They didn't belong. And they, it wasn't them. It, it, it destroyed their, uh, their uh, contact with other people, destroyed their social awareness. It, it was because once you become jaded like that, once you, once you move into a jaded experience, you become so boring, boring. I, and I just didn't want to become part of that fucking boring society that everybody could push around and everybody was, everybody was the same and they, they had all these, uh, oh, you can't do this and you can't do that. And that was all bullshit. So I just moved into the place where I belonged in that social scene. Uh huh. Uh, do you think you were your body was a hybrid alien hybrid? Oh, probably. Yeah. I I really wasn't focusing on that, but yes, probably it was, and they probably gave me some energy toward what I was doing because I was supported by the aliens. I could see that. They were in my group. They made themselves aware that they were there. They didn't come and say, hey, we're backing you up or anything like that, but they were in the group and they were participating with me in, in what I was doing. So, yes, I knew that they were supporting. Absolutely. Uh -huh. So I, I see that you were very healthy for your lifestyle and you survived to, to the pretty old age uh, considering what you experienced. I wonder hey, what was the reason. I had some bad trips. We all had some bad trips, you know. Uh, but sometimes a bad trip brings you a different outlook on how to do things. So if you have a bad trip, you go, hey, I'm not going to fucking do it that way again. I'm going to surround myself with positive people and no jerks or whatever. So you learn to uh, read you learn to read the situation and bring the most positive outcome to it. It took a couple times of uh, negativity. I'll say negativity. It was fucking bad. Um, I'll take a few bad fucking times and make them, uh, bring them into a more positive outlook for later experiences. So, uh -huh. and I could see that the United States was going through a change and they were having a bad trip, man. They were really having a bad trip. So I wanted them to bring that up. I wanted to bring up the vibe of that and bring it into the love, love, love. Instead of all this, oh, we're changing. Change is bad. Boo hoo. So I said, no, no, no. You got to look at change differently. Change can be good, but you have to ride it like a wave. You don't just get lost in it, man. You have to be on top of it. You have to know how to be on top of it and ride it so that it, it's your basis for moving forward. So you don't really get involved in it. You sort of just take it and move with it, but you, you also improve it because you're like, Learning, just like riding the waves of surf, you ride it, you get more talented, and you become successful at being a surfer. So that's what happened to me. I surfed the wave of negativity into a more positive fucking realm. Absolutely. Yep.
So um, it's very little relevant to modern changes. Now we have another wave coming. Yeah. And, um, and that's, you know, exactly. So you either get crushed or you ride it. Yeah, exactly. That's, I, and you know, the ones that rode it with me, they could see, they were like going, yeah, man, this is the way to do it. This is the way. And that's why communes opened, because they were saying, they were preaching the love, 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 love. And it got sort of into sex, love, love. It was very, it turned into a lot of things. But I'll tell you what, the ones that got it really got it. Um, so how much of negativity was in you? You were pretty dark on yourself. So you survived in that time. And in this environment. Well, that's why I could ride the negative wave. It's because I knew it so well. Um, uh, yeah, there was a lot of negativity. I was fed up with society. I fed up with the fucking politicians. Fed up with all the crap that they fed you that, were, that they put a little salt on and expected you to think it was delicious. It wasn't. So... I, I was, yeah, very negative in my outlook at some things, yes. But I'll tell you what, I, I knew that negativity wasn't where it was at. And I realized that they were the ones that put me in this negative state. So I tried to pull myself out of it. I was pretty dark, though. I had, some, I had a dark side. You're right. But I tried to live up to peace, love, and harmony as freaking much as I could because I knew it was anti-establishment and it was anti-hatred and it was what I was, I had to get away. It, it was what I had to get away from to, to bring a change to myself. And when I'm bringing the change to myself, I'm bringing it to everybody else because if you're the example, then then you're whatever change you go through, somebody else is going through it with you. Uh huh. Uh, I noticed you you like to take uh, drug trips with others, and then you enjoy that they fall apart while you kind of stay uh, still under control. Well, um, all right. Let's the the reason for that is this. I was the guide through the trip that would let them fall apart and see all the faults of the world and of negativity and if you want to call it evil, I let them see it all through my perception and they would fall apart and I would stay sane because it was, they were on my trip that I designed for them. Uh-huh. How much of the spiritual guru were you, like a real spiritual guru? Were you uh, an enlightened being? Were you channeling high energies, high, uh, high vibrational energies? When I took a trip and I intentioned it for high spiritual uh, thought processes, oh, I could, it could get real high, yeah. And I could be very, very loving, gentle, and gracious at those times which is what they saw and why they emulated it. Uh-huh. Were you uh, initiated in certain practices? Uh, I assume you were, right? You were very aware of spiritual practices. Of course, yes. I knew I had been to churches and I had been to ceremonies and rituals and the whole nine yards. I had to experience it all to see what resonated with me, of course. I'll see if that was anything that had any validity in my person or in my life realm. So yeah, I experienced a lot of things and most of it I found to be phony or had was full of holes. But there are there is spirituality that is positive whole, beautiful, and enriching, and drug-worthy. I, I noticed you had a really good time in uh, 
with, uh, with untouchables in India where you were burning corpses and smoking marijuana. It was downtime for you, but I think you, you did some transcendence work there. Well, there, what it was, that was a, actually a very confusing time. Uh huh. Um, there was the dead bodies, and, but it was a spiritual transformation from dead bodies to flames and soul and spirit. So, I would, yes, I was stoned when I was doing it, but I was also trying to see the spirits that were, the, the, whatever left of spirit was left in the body as it burned. Or if, if I saw a person that was dying, and I knew that soon that they would be part of this ritual that I was trying to create in my head, um, I wanted to see that spirit before, d during, and after death. Was it your, um, are you, what's your zodiac sign? Do, do, <laughs> I guess I can ask that. But it is a Scorpio, Scorpio, Scorpio sign activity, yeah. It looks like you did a lot of Scorpio work on Earth. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, when, when you help people to, to cross over and, uh, and yeah. to transform and, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was, that's what, I was doing some of that. More, more, more of a, well, sometimes a guide for the spiritual to move over, but a lot of times, at the beginning, just an observer. But um, I did eventually become more of a guide. I could see where I could fit in as, as a guide, and so that's what I did. Uh, I, I noticed one of the biggest miracles you did was uh, uh, to stop the police beating the crowd of hippies uh, during the Chicago uh, convention by chanting. Was there any spiritual, obviously there was a spiritual help, but was there any awareness of the spiritual help when you did it? Yes. Well, you know what chanting does, right? It changes the vibration of the atmosphere. It also sends in the message that you don't even know you're saying to the atmosphere. But it changes the whole atmosphere. And as it moves out and changes, people cannot help but be affected by it. And so as they are affected by it, they are involved in it. It becomes part of them. The vibration of the chant becomes their attention. They are, that's what they're attuned to attention-wise. And they cannot, it draws also their curiosity and interest and what, this is what happened with the police. It wasn't that they were becoming holy. It wasn't that they were changing or doing anything of the sort, but they were curious at what was happening. It, it, they wanted to hear the chant. They wanted to know what, what was being done. Why was the chanting being done? What, what effect is, what is it having? So they turned their attention away from beating the people because they were curious. They were curious to know what the chanting was all about. Uh -huh. was it, and they, it actually frightened some of them because they could, some of them related uh, Satanism to chanting. Some of them related uh, holiness to chanting. Some of them related so many different things. They were curious. So they moved away from beating to see what the chanting was about. Uh-huh. Wow. Um, is it now a good time for you to do a little bit of chanting through Jim? Um, chanting? Well, there's several different kinds of chants. Uh, I, the Indian chants from India, the uh, Native American chants, they're all very valuable and all have their own, their own energy and their own spiritual uh, 
attachment. Do you understand? I invite a transformational chant for the listeners to transform. Ah, transformative chanting. Okay, well, I need to smoke a bowl first. Go ahead. Well, I, I'm in spirit, so I can't. But you can. I, it can. Anyway, but anyway, yeah, I'm just, I'll just have to do it out of character. That's all right. Do we a hey, ya, ya, ha, ya, ya, hey, we, ya, ha, ya, ya, hey, ya, 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 are you following what's happening now? Uh, can you um, comment on our progress with the first contact and with Ascension? How much are you following that? Eh, I'm following it, but not in the same way you might think. Eh, it's, it's very interesting to me. And I know the outcome. I know <laughs> I've watched other civilizations also going through very similar things. I've seen other systems of aliens and planets going through different things that I'm, I'm finding that your, well, the planet I was from, your planet, whatever you want to call it, is uh, actually getting darker, it seems to me. It really, uh -huh. seems, it seems to get, be getting darker before the light. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I see the light. Oh, and there's no question. You got some good stuff going on, but it's still very confused with a lot of people. And there's going to be some darkness before the light. And a lot of people out there are trying to freaking intellectualize it and make it into something that's woo, really, really interesting. It's interesting in its base form, in what it can do transitionally in such a basic form. Love is basic form, and it can transform. And people just want to add intellectualizing to it. That doesn't transform, not nearly as much as just the basic love and human emotions and the things that are uh, logically part of the human being. Those are the things you should work with that are basic and transformative love the heart emotion um the spoken word the but a lot of people would like to rather just make it into something it's not but i, I i'm from the heart man i'm uh, it it might be sometimes angry and sometimes hostile but i'm all from the heart mostly love mostly love uh huh. Yes, yes. There are multiple paths, and your your path is the path of the heart. Uh -huh. Yes, absolutely. And I think that is the only way you're going to find true and positive and permanent transformation is with the heart. What's my path? What's your part? Path. Path. Is to be as True to yourself as possible. That's your part. All right, fine. Um, thank you. Uh, uh, one more question. Sorry. The previous one was the last one. This one would be the next one after the last. Uh, so you are 
you had personal contact and met greatest uh, thinkers and uh, uh, intellectuals of, of the time. Yes. Uh, can you share any of those? Uh, I, I know you met John Lennon and John Lennon was fond of you. And, he was uh, fond of me. The reason why John Lennon liked me so much is because I was a straight shooter. John Lennon's a straight shooter. He says exactly what's on his mind. I say exactly what's on my fucking mind. <laughs> so uh, if he wanted to ask me a question, I would give him the straight shot answer and I would not cover it with all these pretty words and charm. I would just give him the fucking answer. That's what he liked about me. <laughs> all right. Uh, he, you were very much, very much alike you and him, except he worked in a group and you worked alone. Yeah. Or maybe I'm wrong, maybe not. Oh, no, he worked, he, but he had friends that, like Harry Nielsen, that were just really straight on, good people, very down to earth, not very flawed. Everyone that he knew was flawed individual, including Yoko. Uh -huh. Um they were all flawed, but he loved their flaws. He loved who they were because of who they were. He didn't want them to be perfect. He didn't want them to be um, somebody that he could worship or bow down to. He wanted them to be themselves and so he could be himself and show everybody that he was a, a regular guy too and that he was a really cool person and that he had a lot of love and a lot of friendship and a lot of good things to share with the earth. And he didn't have to be a bullshitter or an intellect or any of those stupid things that he wrote against. What do you think about Yoko? Yoko was pure, simple, loving, smart, um, but not a bullshitter. Uh, was it uh, what she, was she a good choice for him? She was an excellent choice for him. She yeah. actually did him a lot of good. However, he did leave her for periods of time and went out and, and was crazy because she was very conservative, even though she was, uh, even though she wasn't really conservative. She compared to him, she was conservative. Right. Uh huh. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, any, can you share any other experiences? Who did you like um, among the intellectuals you met? Mm. Whose biography should I read? Or who, whose uh, poetry should I read? Oh, God. I have no idea who published poetry back then. I forget. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know Bob Dylan's poetry was really amazing to me and i like the poetry of paul simon i thought uh -huh. he was also really really on target with a lot of things that he wrote about so um those those musicians that were on target the beatles had a few things that were really great and on target as well and john lennon of course i um i really liked um well you see People like Rod McEwen, to me, were a little too fanciful, mm -hmm. but it was very popular at the time. Rod McEwen back then was very popular, but wasn't really to my taste necessarily. But I did like the classics. I liked, uh, well, E.E. E. Cummings was good. I, I just, you know... I, I was everywhere. I a little bit here and a little bit there. I can't say that I was totally into any of them completely. I had my own idea of what perfection was in that category. So, but I read a lot of different things. Uh huh. Uh, I somehow at the moment I blank on the name of the of another Beatle who was into Indian stuff, but you know who he is. Were you related to him in any way? I mean. Relating to him in any way? Who? The, the other Beatle. I forgot the name. I'm sorry. I'm just George Harrison? 
yes, Paul, yeah, George, Paul, yes. Ringo Starr, which one? No, George Harrison was into Indian uh, spirituality as well. And you yeah, were there. George Harrison was very love, love, love. Yes, he was into the love portion, but he had no, uh, he was very low on negativity. He, he did not have a lot of negativity. He was actually uh, questioned negativity. Uh, like in his songs, he would question why there was negativity because he didn't really associate it with it very much. He was uh, actually, when he was thrown into negative situ situations, he would move away from them. He wouldn't become uh -huh. really involved. When the Beatles were fighting, he would move away from that. John told me it was like, no, he, he doesn't like to fight. He doesn't like anything about confrontation. So um, George was all about love. Yeah. Uh -huh. But you didn't relate to, to to, to him oh, in any way, right? to him. oh yeah, I talked to George, yeah. And uh, uh -huh. what a great guy. Um, but you know, uh, he wasn't, a, he didn't swear a lot. He didn't, you know, he wasn't really negative in any way. I was really very open, free, and I, I didn't see swearing as negative, and I didn't see us, uh, free love as negative. I didn't see a lot of things that uh, using drugs as a negative. So a lot of things that some people would say are very negative, I, I did not see it that way. And so I was sort of on the outside of the, the norm, so. Uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. You but decided I, you know. That yeah. was normal. I thought all those things, sex was normal, uh, anger was normal, uh, love is normal. Everything that I expressed and felt was normal. And I didn't find it as sinful. I didn't, I didn't call it, label it, or do anything to it. I just was it. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> right? You got that? Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, thank you very much for your, um, for your, uh, uh, for speaking to you, for meeting with, with your energy. And uh, I invite you to come more often and to guide us. We yeah, I think that you do need some honest guidance because a lot of this guidance is too one-sided. It's not, it's not a full person. It's not a full personality. It's all too much one way or another too much just love 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 or too much just this or that or some people are involved in their anger too much you need to be a full person you need full person you need to be exactly who you're supposed to be and everybody has all these emotions everybody everybody has all these emotions so why not use them as they were given to you and use them in their perfection for who you are. So that's what my message is. Right. Yeah, I recently found myself sick and I just covered because it was exactly because I blocked my sexuality. I, when I went to a couple of different healers, they noticed that my second chakra was just blocked completely. Um, I was disharmonized on the chakra level. Yes. That was an interesting discovery. You can't really block it. Hey, uh, look, sexual, sexual activity is not only fun, but it can gr bring you closer together with people. It can bring harmony. It, if, it's, if it's done in the right framework with the right people, it's harmonious and, and uh, loving and true. And... Um, Yes, it, you really can't fight that. I, uh, the question I wanted to ask, but it was blocked. I was silent. It was blocked in my mind. Maybe I wasn't supposed to ask it, but I will ask it anyway. So it's up to you to refuse to answer it. But there were a few gurus, like real saints in India at your time who did miracles. One of them was Neem Karali Baba. And another one was uh, Maharishi, which was visited by uh, Beatles. Did you meet any of those? 
Yes, I did. I did meet some of those. I didn't, I didn't spend time with them like they did. I had a council with them and then I departed. It was more of a one day instead of a, a retreat with them. I just spent, I, I needed to speak to them. So I did and I learned what I needed to learn and I moved on. Uh, did you feel on the same level as they? Ah, uh, no. I, I felt that the Maharishi was witty, human, kind. I, I really respected him so much because he did embody his own personality and his fullness of humanity along with the fullness of his divineness, which I found, found to be quite amazing because he was able to process divinity in a way that did not make him more than human, but fully human and divine at once. Just sort of like, I thought of him as Jesus. Uh, Beatles left Maharishi because they felt that he sexually approached Mia Farrow. Was it, that, was it so or was it just a her misperception? Mia Farrow has problems. Um, I, I don't want to, I like Mia Farrow, but she has problems and she thinks, you know, that, uh, that people want her and the Mahar, Maharishi can come, seem like he's coming on to every single person if you want him to seem that way. So in my opinion, um, no, that really didn't happen. I couldn't, I don't see it. Uh-huh. I can relate to that. Yeah. Boy, this, oh. this person sitting in the sun. What? This person sitting in the bright sunshine, it's sort of bothersome. What are you talking about? It's sitting oh, in the Jim. sun. Oh, Jim is bothered by the sun. Okay, got it. Yeah, we should rather wrap up. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. It was great meeting you. Great energy and uh, a great show as well. Uh, great for show. The, for, for, for the public. Yes, it is recorded. If you don't mind, I will publish this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Just tell them that. Oh, well, don't tell them anything. Just let them draw their own freaking conclusions. <laughs> Thank you. And um, I guess I will let you go and let Jim uh, come back and get out of the sun. All right. Thank you very much. And come again. Give us more guidance. And uh, watch uh, Human Colony, what we do. We're, we need guidance. We are confused. And there is a lot of things to do. And we need to coordinate better, be more harmonious. Yeah. Your energy is needed. All right. Well, I'm with you. I got that. All right. Take care. Peace out. All right. Thank you. Take care.